Are you ready? If you are a mom that is in the middle of a major transition or preparing for a transition, this video is gonna be for you, for sure. Like our family, we've added one, two, three kids to the family. We've added animals to the family. We've made a thousand mile move. I've gone from being a full-time working mom with two kids to being a stay-at-home mom with three kids. We've had huge financial like shifts in our family. There's been a lot of transition for our family. And so God has taught us some things along the way. I wanted to share. In fact, I'm going to share three core values that can give you sort of a foundation, or at least my experience was that it gave a really good foundation to be able to get through the transition. So if you want to go ahead and skip ahead or at some point want to go back to those significant core values, feel free to look in the description for the time codes uh, so you can go right to it. But while I'm talking about this, I also thought that I would give you sort of like an introduction to all of the animals in our house because we have a lot of them. First one here is Wheels. He is the oldest and he is also just the scruffiest. He's just got a couple injuries, but we love him. Are you gonna show us how you go down the slide? Please. Uh, okay. <laughs> go. Good job. Okay, you can almost always find Desi in my office. from Landon. I think she's hiding from Landon. She's the chill cat, what you would expect of a cat. Just kind of hangs out under furniture to hide from kids. Now this next one is a reptile. Actually it was Hadley's Christmas gift this year. He's a bearded dragon. I really like him. He's a little beard right here. Just a little gentle. Don't give him the snack. Don't give him that. You can just pet him. Don't give him that. Don't give him that. Don't give him that. <laughs> okay. So a friend of mine shared with me in the middle of three major transitions, major transitions, that we must learn to love what must be done. And this was a complete perspective shift for me. She shared the reason why this is, is that when we often have expectations on ourselves or new responsibilities or things that we don't feel like we can handle, there is fear that's arising in us. Um, there is sort of like a bitterness or begrudging sense that we do something. But if we can shift our attitude to say, and learn to love that thing, it completely changes the dynamic of how you work through and do those actions. And I think that in the middle of transitions, one of the most common issues we struggle with is fear. We fear that our family is not gonna be able to handle that transition well. We fear that we are gonna fail at transitioning well. We fear new expectations or new responsibilities or a loss of something. All these fears come up, but we know that like love overcomes fear. And so when we choose instead to look at these new things, kind of like when we got this lizard, I ended up finding out that there's like a lot of responsibilities daily involved with this lizard. And I don't handle suddenly having a lot of like extra responsibilities in a day. I feel like I have my capacity, right? And I was nervous, I could be nervous, that like, oh, my capacity's reached. But instead, if I turn and look at this whole beautiful situation and say, I love the lizard and I want to love and care for the lizard, then I have a little bit of a different heart attitude when I'm approaching things. So when you're walking through things, use this statement out loud with yourself and out loud with your children and encourage them. Let's learn to love what must be done because it must be done. It must be. We don't have a choice. So let's love as we walk it out and instead of fear or begrudgingly walking it out. Ah, all right, you ready to go feed the chickens? <laughs> nah. <laughs> boot. Uh, uh. <laughs> Other boot. <laughs> High five. 
Good job. All right. You ready? Go. There you go. Does that feel better? Good job. Okay. The next thing I would encourage you to do is call your family up. We know that like growth is important, and if God is calling your family to this transition, then He's gonna equip all of you to do it. And as mom, like you can empower yourself and your family by saying, hey, I'm gonna call us up. I know that waking up earlier is gonna be hard. I know that having to deal with this transition, with this person picking you up, or you spending this extra time with this person, it may feel hard. And at first, it honestly could be really hard, but you can call your family up to say, hey, this is a part of us growing, stretching, adapting. It can be beautiful for your family. So embrace that and call them up. All right, you ready? You took your shoes off. You took your shoes off. There you go. No, no, I want to wake up. Sounds good. But I can still, it can still break. Yeah. But we can go still, ahead. Go and, ahead, and we can still give it to the chicken. Oh, big job. And we can still give it to the chicken. Because it came from. We tried the Landon thing, and it did not work out so well, so the girls volunteered to come with me. No. No. Okay, the last thing. Uh, this is where I'm supposed to share with you the third value. And I will, but I feel like I have to be honest with you about how my day went. Um, I struggled a lot through today. It felt like, in from a spiritual realm, like a bloodbath. All over my house. Just everywhere. I wrestled with pretty much every single gross weakness that I have. Um, and a lot of negative thinking. And I say it's a battle because multiple times throughout my day, I um, would pause in a moment and just ask the Lord to show himself to me. And in those times, I felt like he swooped in and just like won a victory for me. So um, that was the hard part of my day. And when I got to filming for this third value, we're in the chicken coop. I've tried three times and I can barely get a sentence out. And on my fourth, I hear this whisper in my ear that says, you are such a phony. And that like really hit a chord for me. So much so that I said, I'm out. And I don't wanna do this video, we're done. And I left, just up and left. Uh, but I came in here and did the same thing again. I said, God, would you show yourself to me? And as he almost always does, he did. He showed himself to me as my daddy. And he sat with me and he spoke with me and he encouraged me and he redirected my thoughts. He showed me things from scripture and um, I really needed it. And it wasn't like this beautiful, happy session. It was actually really painful. I was crying, struggling with so many of these thoughts. Like, why can't I have victory over them like permanently? I would love that. Um, and really struggled with that, that, that final statement that I, I, I heard out in the chicken coop that I'm such a phony. You know, I have never actually called myself that, even in my brain, and no one's ever called it me it before. I've never called myself that and I've never been called a phony before. So it really threw me off, but it seemed to really strike a chord, like a really strong chord. And so the last thing I felt like the Lord shared with me is that 
he is not the accuser. So I finally recognized that what I was hearing was the enemy. Um, it wasn't God. It wasn't some truth. Um, especially when I suddenly looked back over my day and realized that all throughout my day, I sought Jesus, I would seek Jesus. And the third value that I wanted to share with you is that we must look to God. We must seek Jesus. You know, scripture tells us, he promises us that when we seek him, we will find him. And when we find God, we find everything we need for life, like a good, abundant life. And specifically, we hear promises that when we seek him, we will find rest. We will find joy. We will find discernment. We'll find freedom from our fears, from our shame, from our distress. And all of these things, are they not things that we often grapple with in the middle of a major transition? So for whatever reason, the enemy did not want me to share this with you because I was a mess after I had my little session in here. Whew, and I had a friend coming over for dinner and I'm exhausted from such a struggle of a day. But here we are. And I believe that God so quickly reminded me that he is not the accuser. And in fact, that my testimony to you, my testimony, which means God, do it again. So I am testifying to you that in a really dark moment and your darkest moments, in the confusing moments, even in the mundane moments, and specifically, maybe for you because you're watching this, in the big transitions, that God says, seek me and you will find him. He doesn't say, seek me, but oh, except for the moms. Oh, except for you mamas. That I, I'm recognizing you got the toddlers, you've got whatever this thing is that you're balancing right now, and it is way filling your plates up. You're overflowing, everything's crashing in. So huddle in, girl. Focus on your family, focus on your stuff, get your stuff done, feel really good. Yeah, no, that's not what he's saying saying, seek me and you will find me. And he tells us that not because he's like some crazy dictator that just like wants the glory for himself and cares less about us. He says, seek me, you will find me because when you find him, you find life, you find everything that you need for whatever it is that you are going through. So I think it is okay for you to set all your stuff down. I think it's okay for you to set aside the books or the lists or the podcast or the social media accounts or conversations with friends where you're trying to like get your crap in order. I think it's okay for you to set that aside for the sake of seeking the one for his spirit to intercede for you and give you what you need to empower you to get through your transition. When everything else is feeling like it's shifting, God gives us the prescription to stay grounded, and that is by looking to God. Thanks so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Thanks for hanging in here with me. And I pray these three values of looking to God, calling your family up, and learning to love what must be done helps you as much as it's helped me get through major transitions. Make sure to leave a comment, like, subscribe, do all the fun things on YouTube um, just to connect. I would love to talk with you about your transition. Maybe we can be friends. Okay. <laughs>